Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the key differences between Japanese and Western saws and a little later on talk about uh, saw sharpening. Now I'm not going to be talking about the, the shape of saws, this is obviously a Western saw, uh, this is obviously a Japanese saw, and again Western, Japanese. I think we know that, it's fairly clear. Um, I want to really talk about things like the initial cost of the saws, uh, maintenance costs and maintenance, and also things like um, durability, ease of use, that sort of thing. So if we, if we think firstly about cost, then you'll find good quality Western saws will cost an awful lot more than good quality Japanese saws. Clearly, um, a decision about saw buying can't be as simple as just cost, because um, there are other things to look at. Durability, for example. A Western saw, will last you a lifetime, whereas Japanese saw, um, it will eventually become blunt and actually sharpening them is pretty much not on. So um, they're not going to last you as long. Then again, maintenance wise, uh, your western saw, the teeth are going to blunt a lot quicker, probably six or more times quicker than Japanese teeth and so you'll need to get your saw sharpened. So you've got to take into account first of all the initial extra expense of buying a good quality western saw and then the cost of resharpening it. Whereas a Japanese saw, although it will cost you less to begin with, you then you won't have any resharpening costs but you will have the cost of replacing either the whole saw or the blade. Perhaps another thing to consider is um, ease of use. If you're getting into sawing for the first time, then um, it's quite possible you're going to find Japanese saw is going to be easier to get to grips with and to use accurately um, than a Western one. Uh, that just tends to be the, the reality of the situation. But, you know, it doesn't mean to say you will be one of those people. It just, it just appears that more people find Western saws a little bit more difficult to control as they begin with them. As with all saws though, you know, plenty of practice and you'll be able to do great work. Efficiency is uh, another factor. With western saws, you tend to be cutting a wider kerf, removing more material, and uh, as a result, you tend to be putting more effort in. With Japanese saws with very thin blades, uh, leaving a thin kerf, removing less material, it could be said that there's less work to make the same cut. Saws for equivalent tasks tend to be different lengths. So a western panel saw like this might quite easily be um, replaced by a Japanese saw, a Ryoba like this, which is you know, less than half the length. So you, know, you may be having to take an awful lot more, you know, perhaps twice as many strokes with a Japanese saw as with uh, the western saw. So, Physical effort and the amount of work you put into doing the same cut doesn't just come down to uh, the width of the curve. Something else that's quite common um, with people that are used to western saws uh, then going to try Japanese saws, they tend to find it um, a little bit difficult making that transition. Uh, they're so used to using a western saw, all the technique is sort of in their muscle memory so to speak. Transitioning into a Japanese one can be a bit of a struggle. Um, and I'm sure probably the same is true if you've done all your work with Japanese saws, then transitioning to a Western one. I like to have a saw, a Japanese saw and a Western saw that will cope with the same sort of work, and then I can swap between each other, which saves me working a particular muscle group the whole time. Uh, also helps my back, I find. I get less backache if I'm doing a lot of sawing and I swap saws uh, frequently. I'm going to be covering work holding in another video, but it's also something to uh, consider when we're looking at the different styles of saws. Because one cuts on the pull, one cuts on the push, um, the way you hold your material that you're sawing can often be different and uh, that may influence your choice of saw as well. I want to say a little bit about um, sharpening saws. And first of all, um, a warning really, 
If you haven't sharpened saws before, you don't know what you're doing, don't just watch a video of how to do it. Grab yourself some files and start going away at your saw because the chances are you'll actually make it worse than it is already. The techniques involved, although you, know, you can find you can get a book on it, it'll tell you everything you need to do. You can watch videos and some of them are quite good showing you what to do. Even if you think you're, you understand everything and you follow what you've been told, pretty much uh, assured that the first few times you do it, you're not going to get the results you're expecting. So um, grab yourself a couple of really cheap western saws at a flea market, one cross cut, one uh, rip cut, and, uh, and practice, and practice, and practice again. And don't touch even a moderately priced saw until you know exactly what you're doing. That's my advice anyway. Um, if you're a weekend woodworker, more advice would be send your saws out to a professional sharpener. You can send them out during the week when you're not going to be using them, get them back by the weekend and you're ready to go. Now, first of all, what I term as tuning or resharpening a saw involves making the tooth line the, the right shape. Normally that's going to be dead straight. Um, setting the teeth to be identically spaced and even and then reshaping and profiling those teeth if necessary then setting the teeth and then sharpening them whereas sharpening, which is what I'm going to show you now just involves turning a slightly blunt saw into a sharp saw so you'll need a triangular file, saw file you want to pick one where the width of the, each face is just over twice the um, face of each of the individual teeth that way you can file using one half of it and then when you flip round and file from the other side you can use the other half so you don't end up with a blunt part in the middle of the file. Now we're assuming that the teeth are A in line, B equally spaced, C the right profile. So if you just take your file, pick a tooth that's going to be least worn which is going to be up near the, the heel of the saw Pressing the, uh, the file in there will settle the saw in the right position and that's the position we use when we sharpen. Now to remember where that's set um, you can either put a piece of cardboard on the end of the file, set it so it's level which gives you the, the correct indication of rotation of the file this way and set it parallel to the saw plate which will keep your flea angle correct as well. I use a little piece of wood, press onto the end of the file, so set that in the tooth, rotate it so it's level with the saw, and tilt it on the file so that it's parallel with the saw plate. Then as long as you keep a piece of wood uh, in the same orientation, you know the file's correct. And then we file the individual teeth and we normally start at the toe. If the, uh, the flame angle isn't zero, that is to say the, the file isn't perpendicular to the saw, then it will alternate as you go along the saw. So you want to do alternate teeth and you want to find, first of all, which one near the tip of the saw is the correct angle that you've set the, the piece of wood at. And then you want to make probably two strokes, move across two teeth, across another two teeth. If you forget where you are, for goodness sake, go back and check, don't just guess. Then once you get to the heel, place the file in an adjacent tooth reset the angles on your baton and then you can go back and sharpen all the alternate teeth that you missed out on the first go. And you may find that two strokes with the file are perfectly adequate to get you a nice sharp edge or if not just go back and do a third one if necessary a fourth. Eventually they'll come nice and sharp and if you use a consistent amount of force 
and uh, length of stroke with the file on every tooth then the profiles and the pattern uh, the size of each of the teeth should remain nice and constant and you should end up with a, a good resharpen not a good resharpen, a good sharpening if you find yourself with a saw that uh, hasn't got teeth in a straight line got a undulations or it's got a, a bump when it shouldn't have or a, a, uh, a bow where it shouldn't have the teeth are of different sizes, the profiles are wrong on some of them um, you know you've, you've really got to do a resharpen or a tune and uh, that's the complicated one, that's the one I definitely don't advise so I'll just show you very simply the steps that are involved so first of all would be to um, take the set off the saw and the set is the way the teeth um, are sort of splayed out slightly to make the kerf a bit wider than the saw blade you can take that off by simply putting the teeth down on a piece of hard, hardwood uh, use a hammer and just strike down on them the metal does have a slight memory to it so you won't get it perfectly flat now the next thing to tackle is if your um, teeth are not in a straight line you do that with a mill file and uh, you will find that if you have a mill file with a handle attached it's more difficult because you can't use it nice and square to the saw you have to do it at an angle and you've got less area to balance it on and keep things straight so find yourself a mill file without a handle or take your handle off I'll work from toe to heel so filing in this direction I need to keep the file uh, horizontal so perfectly flat perpendicular to the saw sort of plate now you can either do that and judge it and do it freehand or you can use a squared up block of hardwood which um, you can ride the square section against the saw plate you can hold the file flat on the piece of hardwood just overlapping the saw plate a bit keep that all pressed up nice and tight and work like so You can purchase um, holders for files for doing this job, but a simple block of hardwood does it fine. This process is called topping or leveling, and uh, you know you've completed it when you can see a tiny bright spot on the top of all the teeth. And anyway, when you've done that, the next step is to shape the teeth. Do that with a triangular file, saw file, and this is where things become complicated because the profile you want for ripping and for cross cutting is different and for different types of ripping and cross cutting can be different uh, the cutting angle of the teeth will make a, a difference to how fast and how aggressive the cut is um, how much tear out you get with the cut and also the fleam angle when cross cutting will make a lot of difference to tear out as well so actually judging exactly what's right for the material you're cutting and for the purpose of the cut as well if you're just rough cutting and you want it to cut as fast as it possibly can you're not too worried about a bit of tear out here and there so all those different factors come into play and that's why I say this is a quite a complicated beast to master I'm certainly not a master of it um, I can keep my saws in, in good enough condition for myself but if I want them to be as good as when they came out of the factory I still need to take them to a professional saw right so for a rip cut saw um, the simplest way to do it would be to have a rake angle which is a cutting angle the face of the teeth um, that do the cutting will then be at 90 degrees to the saw plate so the flat side or one flat side of the file faces the handle and we keep it in that rotational aspect the fleam angle for 
a rip cut, the simplest way to do it is to have no fleam at all, so perpendicular to the saw plate, and we keep the file nice and level um, in this direction. We've just said that we're doing this because not all the teeth are the same height, um, nor all the same shape. So as you do this process, you want to work on the slightly bigger teeth, wearing those away first and working on both the back of the tooth and the front of the tooth to gradually reduce them in size so that the ones next to them get a little bit bigger. I hope that makes sense. Keep doing that until you've got equal shaped teeth and of the right profile. Then we can set them. Setting the teeth is done with a saw set or you can do it with a, a nail punch against a piece of hardwood on the bench. Uh, these generally have numbers on them for the tooth per inch and the, the different uh, sets that would be recommended but it doesn't mean to say that's the best set for the work you want to do. So once again another variable uh, which is going to make a difference to how your saw works. So again complicated, go to a saw right. If you're doing it yourself the uh, saw set simply sits over the tooth that's going to be set you pull the handle or squeeze the handle and the tooth is just bent over the amount that uh, you've set on the wheel. Once that's done you go to sharpen the saw. Now it should already be nice and sharp uh, because you filed those teeth to the right profile. That just gives it a, a nice polished finish to the teeth. For a cross cut saw, and actually this saw here is a cross cut one cross cut panel saw. The, um, the angle is slightly different. Um, if you're going to have a go then think about rotating the file by about 15 degrees so that the, the tooth actually the front of the tooth faces the heel a little bit. So rotate the file about 15 degrees and also you're going to want a bit of fleam on it. For a tenon saw, something like that, or a panel saw, probably about 10 degrees, so 10 degrees away from um, perpendicular. And again, you shake the teeth, set them, and then a final sharpening. Now, if that's not enough to put you off sharpening, I don't know what is, and um, really, I don't apologise for that. It is something where you can make a, a real mess of your saws and I do really advise that you take them to a saw right. If you're not going to, if you're going to have a go yourself, I have got some other videos on, on uh, sharpening which you can look at and there are some other on the web. And if you look at them you'll find probably they're all a little bit different and that will confuse you even more. Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!